समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतम करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विधर वसुदेव सुत कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु okay so uh today we start a new chapter this is chapter 15 and uh, uh this chapter till now you know we have dealt from individual to the world of multiplicity to the variety in the world why it is how it is including the human personality the gunas the kshetra kshetragnya this that and the other this chapter deals with the source of everything this chapter deals with the ultimate truth the ultimate reality that there is hmm? so uh, here it is knower of the field as gurudev used to say kshetragnya minus the field that is the kshetra kshetra is the objective reality that you see around you people situations objects this that that is the kshetra so minus that kshetra we now go to kshetra gnya and kshetra gnya you see the thing is kshetra gnya the knower i will not say the knower of the field over here because here the field is being minused so we concentrating only on the spirit that is the reality that charges everything else that you are or at least you think you are and the uh, thing around you hmm? also gurudev had said for this chapter you know he said that it is so intense and it is the most mystical chapter of all the chapters in the bhagavad gita it is highly mystical in nature because it talks of that which is not tangible to your senses <coughs> it cannot you cannot see it you can feel not feel it touch it smell it anything it is not like anything else that you know or that you have seen because your mind as i have always said can only revel in the field of the known you cannot explain anything to anybody unless they have seen a similar object somewhere right like supposing there is a blind man and he asks you what is the color red whatever you may say it's like a tomato it's like an apple it's like a red rose he'll say but what is the red so unless he has seen something that is red you cannot by comparison say that it is like this or it is like that now here when this is something unique this is something which has no comparison whatsoever so how can you describe that so therefore it is described in mystical terms hmm? and by now arjuna's doubts have been quite removed and he is quite ready to listen to krishna explaining the nature of the pure self hmm? minus the kshetra as i said so gurudev only said this when he was teaching this to us and he taught it many times to us and he said be very very attentive so i am just requesting all those who are listening please listen very very carefully don't do other things while you are listening that somebody is sipping tea while listening or somebody is uh, nicely half reclined on a cushion or something sit up put your mind there and listen very carefully 
otherwise you will not get the subtle truths of this chapter and since it is mostly a depiction in symbolic terms in mysterious terms because that is the only way reality can be if in any way conveyed to a human being as i said it does not resemble anything that you know okay so the mind has to expand to the size of the universe to understand or conceive the universe right your little petty narrow mind is shriveled up okay and it is also crumbled and shrunk into what me my wife my children my house my car my wealth that is all how small how petty even when you look up at the sky you understand the vastness of the sky especially at night when you look at the stars you know so many of them even the light that travels to your eyes of one star that star may not be there now because it takes so many so many so many light years for it to reach you think about it the distances and what are you and what are your things me and mine so the expand your mind to try to figure out try to understand the huge question that you know you have to rather than identifying with your personal tragedies or your personal uh, comedies or gains or losses in life try to identify with the entire and try to see your own position in the entire how long are you there and how important are you what are you the pyramid stand nobody knows who built them right so i mean there is so much so much and even i mean yesterday's paper i saw some children trekking in i think uk somewhere they found the remains of a dinosaur or whatever they call trilosaur or what sort i mean some creature that lived millions of years back think about it millions of years back can you visualize we don't know beyond bc and ad hai na kitne saal think about it. think about it huh? so just expand your mind to try to understand how small a creature you are and in that how narrow and limited and shriveled up your mind is and from that try to lift your mind like uh, the lord over here the divine lord is trying to lift up arjun's mind to that stature and try to explain to him a a, a, a phenomena that is totally unknown to him hmm? now here uh, see he uh, the geeta describes the this unknown factor even the vedas describe this unknown factor as purushottam purush uttam uttam means the best and purusha purusha means the ultimate reality the reality that is charging everything that is the reality which gives life to everything that is called purusha not man not male female type of a purusha hmm? okay now so then see taitri upanishad says uh, for that matter what taitri you know vedanta does not believe in creation okay it believes in manifestation bhai pragat kripala when ram ji is born pragat hona suddenly appeared appeared okay not born krishna appeared in the jail so 
they appeared and their mothers requested them to take the form of a child and all the divine qualities to be put to rest for the little time that they want to enjoy him as a child and then he takes the child's form okay so ye jo cheez hai aapki taitri upanishad also says that it is a manifestation there is no such thing as creation because everything is one there is no space between what you see and what you are you will say wow mr saran what are you saying there is no space there is so much of space the thing is tell me how much of space is there between a dreamer and the dream carefully think how much space is there between the dreamer and the dream there is no space <clears throat> the dream is born of the dreamer it is the dreamer it is nothing else but the dreamer similarly how much space is there between a dreamer and the waker is there a space yeah the dreamer himself is the waker the waker himself is the dreamer no matter how much of multiplicity you see in the dream it is still the waker's dreaming mind right see these things just think about them very 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 carefully see see now when you say the knower the knower the word knower can only be used in terms of the known if there is no known how can there be a knower you say knower of what isn't it knower of what so there has to when you say the knower there has to be a known here we are talking of pure awareness pure knowledge itself it is not knower who knows it is the one and only pure awareness okay objectless awareness okay that is what it is so you have to go beyond the kshetra objective world and only come to the kshetra gna okay who enables knowledge one who enables your mind to gather knowledge okay and now carefully the dreamer himself becomes the waker the waker himself becomes the dreamer and the waker dreamer dream is one reality there is no space how much space is there in your dream in the objects that you see supposing you are seeing a mountain in your dream how much space is there between you and the mountain it is only the dream itself it is all one you are manifesting it with your own mind there is no objective reality hmm okay so here uh, see now na okay let me read uh, let me read the uh, first uh, first uh, stanza and uh, reading the first stanza let me also tell you that gurudev used to say that this chapter gives the deepest philosophical truth in a very brief manner because it has very few stanzas it is short so he says in terms of brevity and in terms of intensity of philosophical reality there is no comparison to this chapter in world literature in the world literature 
he says there is no comparison to this chapter. So let's come here. Let us see this. Okay. Atha pancha dashodhyaya Shri Bhagavan Vacha Urdva Moolam Adha Shakham Ashvatham Prahuravyayam Chandan Siyasya Paranani Yastam Veda Saveda Vita Okay. Urdva Moolam Adha Shakham Ashvatham Prahuravyayam I'll first read the translation. They means wise people speak of the indestructible people tree. People to sabluk jante hai, ha? All of you know the people tree. It is very common in India, and the botanical name being given here in our text, Ficus religiosa. This is the botanical name of the tree. Now, having its roots above and branches below, whose leaves are the Vedas, he who knows it is a Ved knower. Look at this stanza and even read the, the translation, how confusing this can be. <coughs> that is why, especially the foreign missionaries who come, they love to tell an, an uneducated person that look how illogical and stupid your philosophy is. They are saying that the wise people speak about. Ye jo hai na prahur. Prahur means they speak. Now also notice, they do not give the name of the speaker. No identity of the speaker. What do they mean by they speak of? Who are the they? They is a pronoun. Isn't it? It's a third person pronoun. So what does they mean? Here, they means people who have thought deeply and wisely about the reality. They speak. They choose to remain anonymous. Yes. Hum log kya karte hain? Chota sa bhi kuch karte hain. Oh, oh, our name should be there. Why wasn't my name taken? Why wasn't my name mentioned? Huh? Any little thing we want, we want our name on it. How long is that name going to last? How long is that name going to last? Once you become a handful of dust, huh? as uh, Omar Khayyam in his Rubaiyat says, a little while there was talk of you and me, and then no more of you and me. Prayer meeting over. Everybody has tea and snacks and chats and socializes and goes home. And after that, that's it. Who talks about you even? Yeah. So here the wise people remain they choose to remain anonymous and even Krishna says they speak of and what do they speak of? The indestructible people tree. In uh, avyayam, avyayam means that which cannot get spent, which cannot get, uh, vyay malum hai na, vyay, vyay means kharch, karna, hai na? vyay, and avyay, that which cannot diminish, that which cannot be finished. So, Prahuravyayam means they speak of the indestructible reality. The wise say that there is, you and I are dis, will, dis, will be destroyed. The bodies will be destroyed. But there is a reality, all pervasive reality, which is indestructible. And how is it? How is it? Look at the mystical image that has been created here. Urdhva Moola Adha Shakha. Urdhva means high up. High up. So the it is a tree. It is a tree. Like you know, a whole lot of you make a family tree. Family tree, the person from whom you come down till you know 
टाइम योर ब्रेन अलाउज यू टू नो कि ओके सो एंड सो वॉज माई ग्रेट 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 ग्रैंड फादर ओके बियॉन्ड दैट यू नो नथिंग दैट ऑल्सो यू डाउट कि यही नाम है कुछ और नाम था एंड सो दैट नेम प्लस ही हैड थ्री सन्स प्लस थ्री सन्स चिल्ड्रन प्लस उन चिल्ड्रन के चिल्ड्रन लाइक दैट यू कम डाउन ना सो वॉट इज दैट फैमिली ट्री यू कॉल इट ऊर्धव मूल अध शाखा अध मीन्स डाउनवर्ड डाउनवर्ड सो द शाखाज द ब्रांचेस कम डाउनवर्ड ठीक है ना एंड द रूट इज वे अप दे सो ऊर्ध मूल अध शाखम secondly since he is talking of the ultimate reality ultimate reality without which the tree of life will dry up the entire tree of life requires the sap the the energizing dynamic force and from where does that come from the root so the root of the tree Why does he say that the root is up there? That means the tree is ulta. Every tree's root is down below, है ना? The ones that you see around you. This tree, the root is up because he is talking of a very noble. He is talking of a. Uh, he is giving you a. Guru Dev says a causal picture. Causal picture given by the Kathopanishad. So he has taken the idea from. Kathopanishad. Kathopanishad is the first one to give the idea of this tree of reality. Okay. Now here he says that you know this is a tree. There is nobility. Okay. Uh, there is power. There is dynamo. It has inexhaustible energy. Everything. so when you say hi dekho ek minute suno everybody in the world all people in the world don't they pray when they pray they look up and pray oh lord oh lord god my father in heaven isn't it you raise your arms above and ask the blessings of the lord ठीक है ना यू से हाई सोसाइटी वेन एवर यू आर टॉकिंग ऑफ समथिंग बिग हाई नोबल वर्थ रिस्पेक्टिंग यू से हाई सोसाइटी हायर एजुकेशन ठीक है ना हाई फैमिली हायर आइडियाज हाई पावर हाई कमांड i'm giving you all these words you know high officials top brass in the army top brass so where is the brass not down brass top brass okay the ladder of rise the highest person bolte hai nahi so this word high is associated with everything great noble powerful Uh, uh you know like uh, something which everybody looks up to and something which lends uh, lends uh, lends a dynamic energy to all hmm? so here the lord is trying to explain in terms of a visual image ye visual image hai acha then shakham ashvatham ye ashvatham the tree the name of the tree is ashvath ashvath now ashva you know means the horse i'm giving you one meaning first ashva means horse and sth means stationed stationed there that means horses used to rest under the shade of this huge tree people tree you know wo kahan se kahan tak phaila hota hai have you seen people tree see the expanse of the leaves and the branches it is from where to where ha ji to over the and therefore it has a lot of shade and horses used to rest under that tree 
that is why it was called ashvatha ashvastha acha now then again the second meaning second meaning gurudev has given over here see swa ashva swa means tomorrow and tha means that which will remain tomorrow okay carefully carefully swa means that tomorrow and tha tha means which will be permanent tomorrow here there is an a added before that a swastha that means that which will not remain tomorrow carefully the tree name means that which will not remain tomorrow and since it is the image of the manifested world around you that you see don't you see constant changes constant change whether in your life or someone else's life or the situations around you your own health your own body take what you may your own mind your own ideas don't they go on changing your own opinions about somebody they change day to day day to day your mind changes minute to minute sometimes it's a happy mood sad mood violent mood angry mood what is happening to your mind constant change constant change that is why it is called ashvatha means the ephemeral ever changing constantly tossing up and down world of imagined reality a projected reality illusory reality that is why also it is called ashvatha okay so uh, the sap that the entire creation draws the dynamic energy that the entire creation draws is from that one ultimate reality and we also point up there you know for that lord you say wo jo upar wala hai baitha hai na bolte hai na ha so this is the upar wala the reality is coming from him theek hai okay now then what kind of reality is there the reality is not seen everything else that is not real is seen that is the nature of illusion think of it that is the nature of illusion when you are sitting in a cinema hall what do you see the reality of what you are seeing is a white blank screen that is the only reality all else that you are seeing on that screen where you sit and cry and laugh and you know jump on your seat or sit on the edge of your seat or all that what is all that that is illusory reality projected on reality but nobody sees the reality there does anybody see the white screen when you go to see a film does anybody watch the white screen which is the reality or you watch the illusory reality that is being projected on it think about it think about it yeah so that is a manifested manifested illusion the reality is there always but you do not see it okay ha aap wo bhi kehte hain unchi dukan ha ha somebody who is very sharp and intelligent aap kehte hain wo bahut unchi cheez hai ha aur adhomukh adhomukh ko kehte hain kitna niche gir gaya he has fallen down nobody falls up you rise up 
and you fall down. Isn't that so? Hmm. So then here, ye dekhe. Hmm. Achha, ye come to the verse. Shakham, uh, achha, the shark, sh the branches are coming down. That means the manifested reality, uh, illusory reality is coming down. And it is, this tree is prahuravyayam. That means it is indestructible. They say, chandansi yasya parnani. Chandansi. Chand is verse. Verses. So verses kiske? Vedas ke. They are referring to the Vedas and what they say. So chandansi yasya parnani. That means the le parna, parna is leaves. So the leaves of this tree are the Vedas. That is the knowledge gained with the help of the Supreme is transmitted by the Veda, Vedon ke chandon se and yastam vedas veda vida and he says that anybody who knows this or who understands this nature of reality is a knower is the real knower usko kehte ved with ved with means what ved with means the knower of the vedas the one who knows true knowledge he is a Ved with it. So, uh, unless you understand it this way, unless you understand it this way, you know, by giving you an example of the dreamer and the waker and the thing, I am only trying to tell you that it is all one. That is what your quantum physics is saying today. That is what your um, astro astrophysics is saying today. That is what if, anything that any scientist is saying today worth his salt that the whole thing is just one. And when you think of this concept that everything is just one, so what is all the shooting match about? Yeah? All the fights, all the wars, the battles, the this, the that, the that, the that. And battles from where? From the microcosmic family. The battles go to nations. Then world wars. Or kya hota unme? Accepting destruction. Nothing. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that this whole picture that is given to you is, is just the picture of the root that is the from where you draw all the life energy and the branches are the body mind intellect perceiver feeler thinker and the objective world of objects emotions thoughts yes sare branches or leaves and all so this is just a simile now it says you see you draw from life and you draw from knowledge the more knowledge you have, the more is your enjoyment of this world. The more is your enjoyment of the reality. The more is your... Because you can see... You can see the reality behind the thing. You know, abhi jase, uh, you get... Uh, Gurudev, you say you get more and more maja. The more and more you know. The more and more knowledge that you know. And the less and less you know the more and more your world shrinks, doesn't it? Even a little bit of knowledge that you gain, your world expands. But the root of that knowledge is one and the same. If that root does not energize you, you will never gain anything anywhere. Hmm? Okay, so ye ho gaya. Then, uh, achha, another is, ye dekho, why... Uh, Gurudev has written, it's not my this thing. Gurudev has written that Anandagiri has interpreted that uh, one of the interpretations is that this entire creation of the world is depicted as a vriksha. Vriksha means tree. Is depicted as a vrish, vriksha by the Kathopanishad. So why did he choose only a tree to do it? Why did he choose a tree to do it? Hmm? 
Vriksha, the root in Sanskrit, means that which can be cut down. Carefully, very carefully. The root, it's given in your text. Root means, of the word Vriksha, means that which can be cut down. And that is what a teacher is trying to teach us. That is what Krishna is trying to convey to Arjun. That, oh Arjun, what are you so panicking about? This whole thing is a projection of your mind and it can go in a jiffy. But so long as you are a dreamer, in a dream, if somebody tells you that this is just a dream and it cannot harm you <coughs> and the dream, you can destroy the dream by waking up. Do you understand that as a dreamer? No. So long as you are dreaming, you are in the world dream. And nothing can make you understand that this is just a dream and you can cut down that dream. They say vriksh can be cut down. You can cut it down. So the spiritual master is only trying to tell, trying to tell you that the dream is a seeming reality. Projected by you yourself. And you are the only one who can destroy it or cut it down, understanding the impermanent nature of the dream that you are projecting. Many times when people fear something is going to happen, something bad is going to happen, how much do they project? Have you seen? Oh, this might happen, that might happen, this will happen. I can tell you for sure that is going to happen, that is going to happen. Does it happen all the time as you thought? No. There are surprises and surprises and surprises. What will happen tomorrow? Nobody knows. So this changing nature of illusion is... This shifting, you know, it is going on all the time. So you have to learn to focus your attention on what is real and take away your attention from the unreal. That is the entire sadhana of a spiritual person. Tell me, what is more important, the real or the unreal? What has got meaning? What has got the essence? The real or the unreal? Still, we don't choose not to see the real. Even when our teacher has so many times told us, wake up, this is the reality. You are not this, you are this. Huh? Guru Dev used to roar from the podium. You are not the body. Again and again, he used to repeat this sentence. You know, it is in my mind, it has been hammered into my mind. You are not the body. And that is so true. We all know. That is so true. One second a person dies. And you can see it in front of your eyes. That the person you call your father or mother or whosoever, that person is no longer there. That is just matter. And that matter is destructive, destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Now the question is a very interesting question arises that if there is just one reality, if there is just one reality and you go on repeating this, that there is nothing else but that. So how come 
the world of matter comes out the you the jeev comes from there the body the desk the table the sofa the house the car the this the that how come all these things are there and they are tangible realities man lijiye that they have come from there only ye bhi mano chalo okay they have come from that urdhva mool okay wahan se aaye aa bhi gaye man lo there is another reality also but then if you say that there is only one sustaining reality so how come these these things what is how come they are moving about and there is life in them how come you and i are speaking so well how come you and i are moving we are only flesh and bones carbon calcium phosphorus as gurudev used to say water carbon calcium phosphorus the composition of the body is that everybody knows it's a scientific fact how come you are talking in such an interesting way yeah so again the same simile helps the vedanti to explain to you the nature of reality that the situational reality in a dream arises from your mind alone your i'm taking the example of a dream now just listen to this the mind is the only reality okay the dreamer is the reality from which arises a huge multiplicity of things the mountain the trees the tiger the birds you the hunter your car your house isn't it and from where are they getting the sustenance as this one was asking that even if they arise who is sustaining them again the mind they belong to the mind created by the mind sustained by the mind and dissolved again into the mind so what is the only reality the mind the mind is the only reality in a dream similarly here the only reality that lends dynamism to the entire world that you see manifested around you is him alone and it is only through a great guru's grace that you can get this knowledge at all otherwise people hardly even try to know it is a mind blasting knowledge it is a, a truth this matter but nobody thinks like that living day to day petty lives just like animals and facing realities day in and day out uh, 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 sorry facing elusive realities day in and day out facing the <coughs> constant changes and cribbing about them grumbling about them facing them sometimes dejected sometimes happy sometimes something sometimes something and this kind of thing goes on and on and on so the relationship between the lord and us there is no relationship it is one and the same just like the dreamer and the dream the objects in the dream and the dreamer so when the teacher says that you and the lord are the same you are one you are the lord only we just look blank at him and this is is that he is trying to explain something which you have never heard never seen about so he uses things like mysticism he uses things like imagery he uses things like symbolism and tries to convey through inference and through words that my student will get the real
okay so we do this much today and the next verse we do next time om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnam tachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti 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 hi hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om